What's going on, chess lover? This is Maurice Bishop Chess. So y'all know my slogan, life is a game of chess. If y'all looking at my content for the first time and you're the one that want to get better in chess, whether it's opening, middle game, or end game, or maybe you're on my channel because you want to be entertained with the live bullet and blitz games that I play online, or maybe you want to find out not only how to be successful on the chessboard, but also successful in life. If this is you, make sure you hit that notification bell on, and also don't forget to hit the subscribe button and guys if you have any questions and any content that you want me to share make sure you drop that comment below and i will give you the content that you requested without further ado let's actually get right to this video all right guys peace Lover. This is Maurice Bishop Chess. Y'all know my slogan, life is a game of chess. Guys, I have another amazing Black Lion chess game that I just want to share with y'all. Uh, I'm pretty sure y'all going to love this game. I'm telling y'all. And I have some other techniques uh, in this game as well. So pay attention, all right? All right, guys. So obviously, I play against a 2207. And obviously, I'm back to the 2200 again. Um, 2202 right now. I was 2230, no, 2240 last night, and um, I was tired, and I I was I, I was I was actually tired, but I still wanted to play, and I I just kept losing, but I got back to my 2202 again, so <laughs> it's crazy. All right, guys, let's actually get right to it. All right, obviously my opponent played as white. Uh, he played c4, which uh, most people are going to play. I play e5, uh, knight c3, d6, um, d3, uh, knight b to d7, um, e4. And usually, guys, like, usually when they play c4 and e4, this almost looked like a Dutch type of formation, like the Stonewall Dutch, where they'll have an e4 and c4 pawn, even though they leave a weakness in a d4 square. But eventually, they want to um, hit with uh, d5. But in, in this sense, it's kind of like will be a waste of time because you already know how we play the black line. We always leave that pawn on c6, so that knight will never get to knight d5. So c6 is played, uh, f4, queen c7, uh, he takes, and I take back. And the whole point of f4, guys, and I just want y'all to be really clear about this. When they usually play f4, you already know that... Uh, like probably 98% of the time they're going to want to castle kingside because they want to have this rook on his f file and try to do some havoc on your king so that's the whole point of f4 so pay attention to this all right so knight f3 is played i go knight g to f6 bishop b2 and i go h6 a6 is played because again we want to stop of uh, the knight from coming to g5 and also stop the bishop on g5 uh, from coming as well. So white castle kingside. So now as y'all see, he has a rook on the f file. So once this knight get out the way, he'll potentially try to do something on the king. All right. So we go bishop e7. Uh, h3 is clear. Notice, guys, and you really got to pay attention to um, your opponent's squares, like the weaknesses. Remember I told you he played E4 and C4, so he left this um, square, these dark square weaknesses right here. Remind you, we have a dark square bishop too, but you'll you'll see why um, this kind of, this formation kind of messed him up. And then on top of that, he has a backward pawn right here, which um, if this light square bishop gets out the way, then uh, this pawn on D3 can become weak. So when you're playing the black lion, you want to pay attention um, to these um, weaknesses, backward pawn, uh, backward pawn, dark square weaknesses. And of course, you made some weaknesses on this side with dark squares, especially with this h3. All right. G5 is played. So now uh, this bishop, I mean, it got some moves and everything. It could go bishop e3 if you wanted to. But the whole point of G5, y'all already know it. With the G4 coming in and then bringing this rook on the G file, you know, it gets a little crazy, right? So knight h2 is played. I go knight f8, no problem. Knight g4. Now, guys, 
of course, I took Nightcatcher G4. Um, then I just said I was right to take this. Definitely was right. Now, he goes Bishop Catcher G4. Now, look at this, guys. Knight Catcher G4. Now, I remind you, I'm only playing logical moves, logical moves right now. However, uh, when I was analyzing this further, I know that uh, the engine wanted me to go Bishop Catcher G4. And I'm going to tell you why. Because, remember, I told you this backward point, if this light square bishop um, leave this um, this point alone or whatever, then this backward point is going to become weak, especially when I start um, bringing this um, rook in the, on a D file. You know, this will be, um, become weak. So I'm going to show you something. So, oh, my bad, guys. Um, so, yeah, bishop capture G4. Uh, let's say bishop C5 check first. We attack the dark squares. You know, and then after king h2, then knight catcher g4. And then if the queen take, we go knight e6. So the reason why the engines say this move is better, because number one, we're controlling the dark squares. Uh, we have this nice uh, knight e6 post right here, which can potentially go to f4. And then um, after, let's say, rook b1, we, we get to the d file. Because again, this is becoming a little crazy now, guys, because this is backward pawn. You know, it's becoming very weak. You know, even if he hits you with b4, you got bishop b7. Now the queen has to protect um, this um, pawn. And then we have this castle on um, king side. And black is actually very great because now we have the opportunity to maybe go queen d7 and have them constantly defend on um, this pawn. Not only that, we do have this uh, knight f4, which is also... Uh, pretty good as well so this right here for black is very very solid you know um but again i mean this is something that y'all can play but y'all know me i don't like playing boring chess or whatever things like that so that's not me so i'm gonna tell you exactly what i did um so after knight catcher g4 i just go to knight g6 this is what i did this is the reason why i went knight g6 this is my human logical thinking, right? By me going knight g6, if he decides to take um, this light square bishop, I'm actually okay with that. You know, I'm very okay with it because either I could take, matter of fact, let's see something real quick, what this one say. So even the engine say bishop c5 check, if he goes king h2, then we would take uh, with the queen. And the reason being is because we want to, move the rook here and then eventually go um rook g8 and then eventually we want to go pawn g4 but not right away yet we want to at least get to knight f4 or maybe knight h4 you know so that's the whole purpose of um taking it back with the queen so always remember that guys you know because again we want this g file up you know that's what we want we want want the g file so we can start an attack on the king all right, so I go rook g8, and obviously um, white doesn't uh, take this. Um, he doesn't take my knight, and he doesn't take my bishop. So he goes rook b1, trying to do a queenside attack. Um, I decide to go knight f4, which is uh, a beautiful post. And he continues to try to go with his plan with the queenside attack. But I think after this, this is kind of too late now, because I finally take... Um, the knight or not not the knight i take the bishop on f5 now look at this guy now look at this board guys look at it notice that again i keep telling you about this backward pawn this backward pawn is weak we already got a knight f4 already um hitting hitting that pawn and then again we also have um the rook on d8 and everything and uh, also uh, i need to go back guys because um the B4 pawn, this is another reason why he did the B4 uh, move. He also did the B4 move because also he wants to guard this C5 square because he see this, uh, he has some dark square weaknesses. So he has to do whatever he can to try to get some type of queen side initiative as well as keep this bishop from going C5 because my dark square bishop controlling this diagonal is very deadly. So keep that in mind, guys. The bishop... Is because I, I want y'all to understand that this bishop is not always just going to stay on bishop b7. Um, bishop b7 is like 
one of those hidden secret weapon or whatever, that little sneaky attack and everything. So it's almost like the bishop is in his um uh I don't, I forgot what you call it with the sword where you put in the pocket. I can't even think of that uh the name of it. <laughs> but it's like when you put your sword in your uh in your sword pocket or the sword case or whatever, you know, it's concealed. And then next thing you know, when you see uh a shot, you can actually take it out. And this is pretty much what this dark square bishop is like. So kind of keep that in mind. All right, so I um after uh, e catches um f five, I actually castle queen side. And um obviously the engine didn't want me to do castle queen side. Um they prefer rook d eight, but in this case I just did rook d eight. So he takes, and now guys, this is where it gets crazy. Um uh, you should be if some if a dark square bishop, if your opponent has a dark square bishop and he takes your knight on f four, you should be jumping for joy right now because now. He's going to have some dark square weaknesses um, to deal with and everything, and it's not going to be very pleasant for him. So I go G catches F4. Why? Because I have the G file. I have the G file, guys. Just think about it, the G file. Also, I still have my rook in front of the queen because this um, white pawn uh, on a D3, this backward pawn is going to be very weak. Uh, he goes queen at three, not a problem. I go queen d7. I add more pressure to that pawn. But also, guys, this pawn is about to fall as well with queen catches f5. So that's the reason why I did it. Uh, he protects his d pawn with rook um, after d1. I go queen catches um, f5. Now, look at this, guys. There was actually a better move. Uh, I actually pre moved this, and, you know. It, it was actually a better move, guys. Can you can y'all actually see it? Can y'all see the um the better move? Give okay, y'all three seconds to think about this. There's a better move. Again, guys, um I want y'all to really look uh really pay attention because I, I want y'all to really get y'all to think because again, white has some weaknesses. And matter of fact, I'll give y'all a little hint. There is one piece that is undefended right now. There is one piece that is undefended. One piece. And just think about it, guys. If you really look real hard, like you see that every piece on the board is protected for white except for one piece. What piece is not defending the other? So when y'all playing this, y'all gotta um figure like, okay, what piece is not defended? Well, if y'all pause this video and y'all couldn't come up with it, but I'm pretty sure y'all probably found it. This piece right here is undefended right now. As you see, every piece is un is defended. You know, this pawn is defended with this pawn. This queen is defended with this pawn. This rook is de um, defended with each other. This pawn is defended by the knight. Uh, this pawn is defended by this rook. Even this C pawn is defended. They all def uh, defended, except for this one. Ho! Oh. The king is right here. Queen d4, check. And then we win the knight on c3. So I'm going to tell y'all, when y'all when y'all continue to play a lot of black lane like I have, you're going to see a lot of people, they're going to um, drop pieces, especially when they uh, exchange their dark square bishop for your knight. So definitely pay attention to this. But uh, but yeah, this is the move that um I should have played. I actually saw it right after I um took the pawn because I had pre-moved it. You know, uh, so, but yeah, always pay attention to that as well. All right, so, so what happened, guys? So what happened? So I go queen catches f5. My opponent goes b5. He's trying to start uh, an attack, you know, on my king. Uh, I just go rook g3. Obviously, he's not going to give up his queen because even if he takes my opponent, I'm going to just take his queen. And, you know, he's not going to really have any other initiatives because... My attack is too strong, especially with my dark square bishop out here. It's 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 crazy. All right, so my opponent goes queen e4. He wanted to exchange, so I go queen catchers h3. So I remind you guys, uh, his queen is actually defending this pawn, so I can't just uh, checkmate him right now. You know, I can't do that, which is why in his mind, psychologically, he feels as though he's doing his 
you know, um, logical thinking, which is why my opponent did B catcher C6, which was not the perfect, it wasn't the perfect one. I guess in a way it kind of really wouldn't matter, you know, at this point or whatever. But um, I, I'm going to tell you what the best move was. The best move in this would have been uh, 92. This would have been uh, a better move. But guys, even though this is like supposed to be the best move for white for the defense, I want y'all to figure out the move that I was going to play. <laughs> y'all gonna be like, "What? Like, what you mean? Like, like what can he do?" I want y'all to really think on this move. I want y'all to think, "What is the best move for black? What can he do in this position?" I'll give y'all a little bit more time, guys. I'll give you a little bit more time to think. What is Black's best move? All right, guys. This is the move. This is the move that's going to say it all. <laughs> F3, guys. F3 is the move. F3 is the move. Why is F3 is the move? Well, F3 is a move because, number one, the pawn can't take um, the piece. And if the knight decides to take the rook, then we got queen catcher G2 checkmate. <laughs> that, was, that is the move, guys. F3. F3 is the move. So I want y'all to really look at this. When y'all get a position, this pawn on F4, like when you exchange uh, for the bishop and everything, just make sure that this um, pawn... I'm telling you, this pawn can do some work, some mighty work. This is like the bravery pawn. The F4 pawn has courage in there, thing because it can push whenever he wants to. So always remember that. And let's say he doesn't take the rope. The knight doesn't take the rope. Maybe he wants to go... Uh, oh, my bad, guys. Let me go back. So let's say queen catches um, F3. Let's say he has to sacrifice his own queen, which is fine. Cause you, yeah, cause in your minds, I know how y'all think. A lot of y'all may think like, well, shoot, he just, you know, took the pawn. So now, if I take his queen, then he could take my queen, right? But look at this guy. Look, look how in a in a in a corner, um, the white is. Remember, you gotta bring all your pieces to the fight, right? Rook g8 check. Remind you, the king can't go here. He can't go here because we're controlling these files. This rook controlling the F file. This rook controlling the G file. So what move can uh, white go to? King H2. Why King H2? Because he can't go King H1. Why not King H1? Because rook captures H3. Checkmate. That would be checkmate. So the only place he could go is King H2, uh, which is where he goes to. Uh... I'm just showing y'all a little thing. So after King H2, you're probably like, okay, so is that it? Like, what else can we do? I'm going to ask y'all that. What other moves can you do in this? Remember, we got this rook in the fight. This rook did his part. This rook got in the fight. This rook got, um doing his part. So what piece on the board that is not in the fight right now? What piece on the board for black is not in a fight right now? You got to think, when it's the black lion, all your pieces got to come into play. This is like teamwork, man. There is no I in team, you know. As well as on this chessboard, there is no one piece that's just going to do it all. Everybody got to come in a fight, you know. We are sneaky black lions, you know. All right, guys, so if y'all figured it out, Bishop d6 is the move. Bishop d6 is the move, guys. All right. This is my phone, guys. Bishop d6 is the move. Uh, after Bishop d6, what can he do? There's really nothing that he can do except for try to uh, scare this uh, bishop away. But then after that, we just go Bishop b8. And then um, after that, it's... It's really ain't nothing that he could really do. <laughs> After rook g1, we go e4, uh, e4 check. And then, of course, um, the king still can't go king h1 because we're about to threat mate on rook catcher h3. So the only thing that he can do is block uh, with the knight. 
And because and because we have so much pressure, and I'm gonna tell you how powerful this um this black line is. We don't even have to automatically take that night because we already know that that night is gonna automatically be lost either way. That that is a given. It's gonna automatically be lost. We're good. It is so powerful that we don't even gotta take. All we gotta do is go e catcher d three. We ain't gotta wait. If he takes, if he takes, um. Uh, Sorry guys. Uh, I was gonna say if we just go bishop capture g3, I mean we could do that if we want, and then he goes king h1, and then we could go bishop or, or b capture c6. And the thing is, it just wouldn't really matter. Um, even if he decides to go rook capture g3, uh, we still have you know this, and then even if he decides to you know come here, we're still good. You ain't got to worry about C6 because we got Rook G3, you know, and then if he comes here, we have um, D2. <laughs> it doesn't matter if he comes here because we'll just come here, and then it, it doesn't matter if he push because then we can just take uh, with the Rook. And even if he takes the Rook, I mean, we'll take. It just really doesn't matter. Um, Black is just, it just dominating in this game, all right? But I wanted to share that variation with y'all. All right, so in, in this game, you know, my opponent, he did B catcher C6, which was the wrong answer because I go bishop C5 check, you know. And um, what he did or what he did is he went king F1. This is the move that he did. And obviously it cost him the game. Um, but I'll, before we get to that, I just want to show you uh, the move that a lot of people would say. Well, why didn't he just go d4? Well, this is the reason why. Let's say rook catches d4, right? And let's say after rook catches d4, let's say he goes c catches b7 check, which is what most people would do. If I go king b8, you're probably like, oh, man, he has queen catchers e5. You know, black about to lose. No, black is not about to lose. Rook d6 check. Not checking with the rook, but we're talking about checking with the bishop. The bishop is checking this king. So you're probably like, okay, he's in check, so what's going on now? Okay, queen could just take, and then black about to lose. Nope, because your left is open. Queen catcher g2, checkmate. Checkmate. And, and all it is is just a, uh, we deflected the queen from guarding... Um, this d2 square, you know, on a light square. So we put them on the opposite square to get us, um, to let us uh, checkmate the king. All right. So my opponent, uh, so let, let's look at this real quick. So he comes here, king b8, queen catches e5. Uh, we saw that one. And then rook d6. And then if, you know, for some reason, you know, after this check, the king goes um, f1. Then again, we still got queen catcher g2 check. He comes here, and we go queen f2 check me, which is um, so crazy. Um, so, yeah, so this is what my opponent did, guys. Uh, my opponent, after I go bishop c5, he doesn't go d4, because d4 is going to lose either way. He goes king f1. I go queen h1 check. Um, king e2. I go rook catcher g2 check. And then, obviously, if you want to make the game longer, you could just sack the queen and everything, but it wouldn't matter. Like, even if you take, I'll just check you, and then if you come here, just still check me. You know, but my opponent didn't do that. He just went uh, king f3 because that was literally the only square he could really go to. And then, obviously, uh, queen h3 is checkmate. So, guys, I hope you actually enjoyed this video. Please like, please share, please comment. Uh, let me know what you think of this video. Um, also, make sure you turn on that notification bell on so you can get great and amazing content. And more, I'm sorry, great and amazing content. And also, uh, another like chess tips and things like that to help y'all better y'all uh, chess. And also, guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. All right, guys. Peace.